Coming up next, I review Queer Cuba or Cuba Intense from Nikolai Parfums. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. This is Joel the Nose, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Nikolai Parfums, the uh, French niche house. And uh, for those of you um, who don't know them, this is a, a top, top, uh, just one of the top niche houses, I believe, out there. They're based in France. The perfumer is the in-house perfumer. She's also creative director, the owner of the company, uh, and that is Patricia, okay, de Nicoli, or de Nicoli. Um, and she is, for those of you also who don't know, the granddaughter of Guerlain, who started the Guerlain, of course, empire, uh, you know, fragrance empire. So a lot of bloodline, great classic bloodline French perfumery here. Uh, I've only reviewed one other fragrance, and, and they have a. she has a lot of fragrances. I think about 30 different ones out over the last 25 years or so. And I'm going to be reviewing a lot more because I really like this house. Um, but today I'm going to be reviewing again Queer, that's C-U-I-R, Cuba Intense. I'll put up the, the name here so you can see it. And I will also put up a picture of a bottle that I took at Osme where I smelled this. Um, today I'm going to be smelling a sample or a decant that I got so you can see it here. Caveat, again, that is not how fragrances are meant to be delivered, at least the ones that come in normal bottles like this. So when you spray it using the atomizer, and their particular, these bottles have like a jet spray, like a long spray, uh, it gives you a much better, it's going to give you better longevity, it's going to give you better uh, projection, sillage. So this review, you got to take it a little bit with a grain of salt because I never, at least on my skin, get the same delivery as I do when I'm rubbing it on. So having said that, this came out in 2014. Uh, this is, uh, again, a uh, the Nikolai Perfumes from Patricia de Nicoli. It would be classified as a tobacco woody fragrance on Fragrantica. It's given a rating of 3.94, so pretty high. Uh, for a, a retail on this for about for about um, about one hundred ninety five dollars for a hundred ml bottle, so it's kind of in the middle range there as far as niche prices. You can get a thirty ml bottle, which I always recommend. Start small, see if you like it. Much more reasonable, around sixty five dollars or so retail. What were they trying to do with this? What was the the goal behind this? Uh, basically, Patricia created this because she was inspired from when she was a youth by the humidors that her, I guess, father or grandfather would keep in their house. And it was a humidor probably with Cuban, <laughs> I imagine Cuban cigars. Um, and that kind of tobacco woody smell that you get from a humidor that keeps cigars or star, stores cigars, if you've ever smelled that. And uh, one of the quotes they have is, it evokes the heart of a cigar box with fresh licorice start. So I'm going to give my impression at the end to see whether I think it achieved that goal. Coming from Miami as I do, which is uh, uh, the Cuban influence here is you, I cannot overstate the impact it's had culturally, politically, food, music, everything. The heart of Miami beats from the Cuban heart. So something like this is always very interesting to me. And I, and I take this very seriously when I review something like this and I want it to be excellent. The top notes are listed as anise which kind of gives it a licorice smell. Also, licorice is one of the notes listed, Sicilian lemon and spearmint. The heart notes are sage, lavender, um, let's see, uh, pelargo, pelargonium, <laughs> yanglang, magnolia, coriander. I also saw cumin listed sometimes. And at the base, you have tobacco, hay, patchouli, cedar, musk, and civet. Um, so let's get right into this. I'm just going to put a little bit on my skin. I've already, I've been wearing this all day, but I want to, I always like, if I have the bottle with me to, you know, put some on my skin so you can kind of see my, my reaction there. So I'll put it on, I just put it on the back of my left hand. So, uh, I love the opening of this. Uh, I got to say this, love the opening. Very, very unique. And you can imagine that mix of spearmint with licorice is what comes through. Uh, for me, it's mostly the spearmint that comes through and the licorice would be the second note. I, I've seen reviews where people kind of say it the other way around on my skin. 
I gotta say, it kind of comes across as a spearmint chewing gum. I mean, it smells like a pack of gum that was sitting in my pocket or in my car when you pull it out or when you open up the little tin foil of, say, some spearmint gum. It's that with a little douse of licorice, like Twizzlers. Um, I actually get, also, when you go deep on the skin, not when it's projecting off, when you go deep on the skin here, I'm getting that hay coming through initially also. So I described it as follows. Um, it's, it's like sitting in a barn surrounded by leather riding saddles, drinking lemonade, and eating licorice Twizzlers. Um, so <laughs> uh, while chewing spearmint gum. Got that? It's a lot. Um, it's almost gourmandy because it's very kind of sweet and, and very rich. But it doesn't, I, it's, but it's not a gourmand. It, it, but it, it does come across a little bit gourmandy. And you are getting a little bit of the lemon. That Sicilian lemon comes through. I think the, the lemon and the mint are grounding that licorice and making it so it doesn't get too gourmandish. I think the licorice otherwise would come across that way. So at the top, this comes across very more feminine to me at the top. But I'll say this. After about a half hour, uh, it really, a lot of that licorice kind of goes away for me. And it becomes actually almost a little soapy, fougere-esque. And that's clearly from the lavender because uh, lavender to me always, if you look at that as a classic main component in a fougere or barbershop fragrance, and so at that point, it becomes a little bit more masculine. So it's kind of a cool transition there. And it also has almost a shampoo-like smell to me at that point. Uh, very nice, very pleasant. Um, but from there then, I got to say, I've been wearing it all day. I got average sillage and projection only about one, one and a half hours. Compared to one of the fragrances I reviewed before, and I'll put up a card here, which was by Call Leather Intense. That one, I, I got much better performance. Now, that was sprayed from the bottle with the atomizer, which is going to deliver it how they want it to be delivered. If you um, you can watch actually one of my other reviews, I'll put up a card. I just did a thing on the ABCs of atomizers and the importance of atomizers because the house can deliver a fragrance specifically what they want and how they're delivering it is going to determine whether the top notes, the base notes, the heart notes are emphasized, the projection, the longevity, all that's going to be determined by that at or influenced by the atomizer. So when I rub it on the skin, I'm taking away a lot of that impact. So uh, again, I got average one to two hours. This lasted about four to five hours on my skin completely before it almost dissipated. So I didn't get great longevity on it. And I also didn't get great complexity. I never really got that kind of base where it's supposed to get more tobacco and that kind of humidor Cuba cigar effect. I was looking for something to be kind of very Cuban cigar uh Maybe a couple months ago, I spelled Tobacco 28 from Lola Bo. I'll put up a card there also of that. That one came across to me much more of kind of that. It, it, it reminded me of, of Miami and the Cuban cigar and all that much more. Um, so, you know, maybe I'll do an update once I get a chance to spray this on with the atomizer to see whether that affected it. But on this initial kind of wearing you know, uh, I'll, I'll say I don't think it achieved its goal that they were setting out for uh, this kind of classic humidor kind of Cuban cigar tobacco smell. Uh, but again, you already got my caveat. So for those of you that have smelled this, I know a lot of people love this fragrance. And again, I had really high hopes for it. It was a little bit of a letdown. But the top notes, I loved how it started just for me. And they just kind of went blah after that. So um, let me hear some comments for those of you who have worn this, who love it, because I know there's a lot of you out there that do. Um, and tell me where I'm wrong, where I'm right. If you are already subscribing, please, um, thank you for doing so. I really appreciate it. And for those of you who have not, you can subscribe if you found this useful. You can ring the bell for um, notifications. You can like the video if you thought this was useful. Please, I love those likes. I love those subscriptions, of course. And um, yeah, I will... Um, like I said, I will update this video once I have a chance to do a kind of full review with the atomizer. But that's it. This is Joel the Nose. And thanks for watching. And I hope everyone's having a great new year.